What is going on guys? Welcome back to Wildcat Cave. Today we are going over the top five football transfers for the University of Kentucky in the 2021 football season. I've mentioned it in a couple videos guys. I'm not sure that there's too many schools out there that did a better job filling all of their positions that they needed to using the transfer portal. Um, Kentucky brought in a ton of dudes that are easily as good if not better than what they had lost. So let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. We'll start out at number five here. I'm not sure this guy counts as a transfer, but he's definitely too important to leave off of this list. And that is at number five, Liam Cohen, the new offensive coordinator for Kentucky. Mark Stoops obviously getting rid of Eddie Grand last year after the um, all-SEC football schedule. It really put a highlight on how far behind Kentucky's offense was in scoring compared to the rest of SEC, and especially in the passing game. And that's what he brought this guy in to do. Uh, Cohen, very smart guy, played at UMass, holds six out of their eight passing records that they keep track of there. Uh, after his time playing, I'm not sure that he had a very good NFL stint, if any. But a couple years after he got done playing, he came to be the quarterback coach at Brown, an Ivy League school. Again, a very smart guy, student of the game. Uh, from Brown, he goes on to be the quarterback coach slash passing coordinator at Rhode Island. Then coming back to his alma mater where he holds that same position. Uh, did a good enough job to get the uh, offensive coordinator spot at Maine. Obviously, did a pretty good job there. I'm not really sure exactly how well, but good enough to get picked up by Sean McVay and the Rams as a assistant wide receiver and quarterback coach. Uh, McVay couldn't have enough good things to say about this guy when asked. Said he's uh, he builds really good connections with his players. Obviously, he's in his early to mid-30s, so he's not far off of playing age, especially in the NFL. So he, he's still in that age where he can build close connections with these guys and really get them to buy into their program. And I believe that being in Kentucky, this his big first um, Power 5 offensive coordinator position, I think he's got a lot to prove. He's going to want to prove himself. So I, I have no doubt that Kentucky is going to come out firing on all cylinders uh, early in the season under this new offense. Obviously, they're trying to incorporate a lot more of the passing game than we've seen. And like I said, he comes from a good system. He comes from that pro style, fast paced, you know, probably 50 50 run pass system under Sean McVay, who again is a good mentor and has a pretty good coaching tree under him so far that early in his NFL career. Uh, McVay, again, could not have enough good things to say. Obviously, builds good connections with his players. And he said that Cohen was one of his most trusted assistant coaches, which I think speaks really highly. You know, he could have came out and just said, yeah, he's a good guy, good coach, whatever, but he went as far as to say he's one of his most trusted assistants, and I think that says quite a bit about Liam Cohen. I think Kentucky has a lot to look forward to in this guy. Now, moving on, number four, guys, the senior linebacker out of Ole Miss, Jaquez Jones. Uh, he he really was a standout for Ole Miss the past couple seasons. Obviously, 2018 SEC all-freshman team began starting as a sophomore in the SEC is huge. Um, played a total of 33 games at his time there, 73 solo tackles and 109 assists for a total of 182 total tackles. That is a lot. He is a, a really, really good talent. He's looking to fill uh, Jamin Davis' shoes. Obviously, top 20 draft pick for Kentucky last season at inside linebacker. Uh, this guy also has draft potential. I think he's kind of right there on the, you know, the verge of maybe sixth or seventh round. But it could play his way up uh, pretty high right now. Um, he Again, he has the big shoes to fill with Jamin Davis. Um, and this went from probably one of Kentucky's most depleted position groups in the offseason to, you know, another one of their strengths. They now have, obviously, Jacquez Jones. They brought in Luke Fulton from Michigan State, bringing back DeAndre Square, uh, J.J. Weaver, and Jordan Wright. So I look for Kentucky's linebacking core to be maybe as good if better than it was last year and last year it was always pretty strong so i think this is a good get for them you know might be higher depending on you know other if maybe if we're doing it for a different team in the sec this guy might be rated higher but kentucky is bringing back a decent amount and, and as good as this guy is I, I think they already had a little bit to work with but definitely not someone to look over going to be a, a strong anchor for our defense and again an, an, another really smart player for kentucky and at number three, we are moving on to Will Levis, the junior quarterback out of Penn State. Um, this guy is actually really good. 
probably would be a lot higher on this list if it wasn't for the Joey Gatewood and Bo Allen already being on the roster. This was a probably a position of need for Kentucky, but with those two dudes already on the roster, not necessarily essential, but definitely, you know, this guy's probably going to get the starting job. Um, Kentucky did come out this past week and say that it's a lot closer than people think, but I, I think the general consensus is, is that this guy's probably still going to get the start the first game of the season. Um, and, and also, the gap between him and Gatewood is probably not as big as some of the guys in their positions, a little higher on the list. But, you know, this guy's really good. He's a 60% completion rate for his career. Uh, 644 total yards, three touchdowns passing, two interceptions, 453 rushing yards, and six rushing touchdowns. He really is a dual threat. He's the type of dude that sits in the pocket but is not afraid to make a play with uh, his legs. He's mobile but not necessarily a running quarterback. And that's kind of what you want to see in today's uh, football. You don't want to have you, – you see it a lot that sometimes the running quarterbacks will have a little bit of success in college. But at that next level, you need a guy that can deliver the ball, has a strong arm like he does, but, but is able to get outside the pocket like a Russell Wilson and make those plays. Um, you know, 60% might not look as uh, appealing on paper, but really that's not terrible. That puts them – uh, if he was to throw 60% completions last year, that puts him about number 60 in the country as far as completion percentage. And that don't sound great when you're trying to be super competitive in the SEC, but that still puts him right there near uh, Sam Ellinger and Bo Nix uh, out of Auburn. So if, if, you're com if your guy last year is competing with Bo Nix out of Auburn, who had a, an amazing receiving group, um, him coming to Kentucky – with you know Josh Ali, Wando Robinson, and a great O line, uh, I, I look for that number to go up this year. If he can improve that to five percent to sixty five percent completions on the year, that would have put him twenty two overall in completion percentage. And if he is able to get up to that seventy percent mark, which is probably honestly a little bit of a stretch, but maybe not outside the realm of possibility, uh, that would have put him in the top ten in completion percentage in the country last year. So, again, I think he's going to go up. I, I think 65% is definitely possible, you know, a top 25 quarterback. Uh, 70, we'll have to wait and see. But definitely not a bad get here for Kentucky. Like I said, probably look for him to start the season. And moving on to number two, we have Dare Rosenthal, the offensive lineman, the senior out of LSU. Really good guy, four-star recruit, uh, started for LSU all of last season. Got in the majority of the games in the championship season with Joe Burrow. Obviously, LSU had a down year. I think there's a lot of things that went into this guy going into the transfer portal. Um, he's had some off-the-field issues. Doesn't seem that him and Coach O got along great. But Kentucky has that tradition, kind of like the Patriots, where we'll, you know, you saw it with another guy out of LSU last year, uh, Kelvin Joseph. He had some off-the-field problems, came to Kentucky, had a, played his way into a second-round draft pick. Uh, really, I think Kentucky has that type of tradition where they turn those guys around and, and really maximize their potential. And losing Landon Young and Drake Jackson on the offensive line this year, this was a big position of need for him. And they went out and got this guy from LSU, uh, projected first-round draft pick right now, could play his way up into a top-15 pick. I, he, Cole Kublik has said with the addition of Dare Rosenthal, uh, he believes Kentucky is going to have the best offensive line in the country this year, or at least the SEC. So that is huge for this guy. Again, he's this high on the list because of team need. Uh, they really needed some help on the offensive line, and they went out and got it with this guy. So look for our O-line to be big. I think whether it be Gatewood or Levis that gets uh, the starting spot this year at QB, I think they're going to be pretty well protected behind Darian Kennard and Dare Rosenthal with their tackles. And Chris Rodriguez is probably just as excited as anybody. There's going to be holes all over the place for him to run the ball. And, and having a guy this good really opens up the entire offense when you don't have to worry about uh, getting all that pressure to your quarterback. And finally, guys, number one, no, uh, obviously not a second thought in my mind, Wando Robinson is for sure the biggest get of the offseason in the transfer portal for these guys. He's a junior wide receiver out of Nebraska, originally a Kentucky kid. Can, uh, UK missed out of him coming out of high school, but he went in the transfer portal and decided to come home this year. Uh, 2019 Paul Horning Award finalist, that is the award that goes out to the most versatile player in the NCAA. That was the year that Lynn Bowden won it. Uh, obviously, was on the watch list last year and is already on it again this year. Uh, 2019 All-Freshman Team, All-American. 
holds two freshman records at Nebraska already, and those are most receptions by a freshman and most receiving yards by a true freshman. Obviously, big-time playmaker. Again, a team need. Kentucky hasn't had that big-time playmaker guy since Lynn Bowden in 2019 and maybe before that, Benny Snell. But this guy is going to bring that explosive explosiveness to Kentucky's offense. He's a walking touchdown. He's going to be able to go out there and get his own plays. I look for – you see his uh, rushing and receiving stats down there at the bottom. He's obviously – Kentucky's going to get this guy the balls as many ways as they can throughout the season, whether that be throwing it, bring him in motion on sweeps, or straight out of the backfield like a true running back. This guy is a big-time playmaker. He's going to be the centerpiece of Kentucky's offense. And with him being the, the slot, shifty, fast, speedy receiver, and then Josh Ali on the outside, the tall, uh, deep threat receiver, I think you're going to see Kentucky's offense open up quite a bit this year, especially with the quarterbacks that are able to stand in the pocket and deliver the ball to these guys. I think it's really a good get here. He's going to, you know, he has seven career touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised if that doubles this year and he'll get seven more just this season alone. Um, an again, big play guy, and that is the biggest get for Kentucky in the offseason through the transfer portal. That is it, guys. That is a short and sweet video of the best transfer portal players Kentucky got this year. As always, if you made it this far, give me a like. Uh, continue subscribing. It means a lot, guys. Comment. I'll reply to as many as I possibly can. Share the video. Thank you, guys, as always, and go